Your favorite genre of movie is action? Okay, mine is Hilary Duff. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name is Ali and today we are ranking and discussing all of the iconic teen movies from the 2000s. So if you're new here, I love ranking things and I love just pop culture in general. And this is part of a series that I do on my channel. So I've previously ranked Taylor Swift songs, One Direction songs, Mary-Kate and Ashley movies, a whole bunch of stuff. So that will all be linked down below. But today we are talking about the movies that raised us. This is genuinely my favorite genre of cinema. Like I do not care about space, Star Wars, <laughs> fantasy. I just want to see a shopping montage, a makeover scene, iconic soundtracks, and beautiful female friendships. Like I genuinely am who I am because of these movies. You know, my parents raised me, but on a much more real level, these movies raised me. So today we'll be talking about the best and also some of the worst films from this era. We will discuss the boys, the clothes, the plots, and everything in between. Make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already. And if you would like me to do more pop culture and ranking kind of videos in the future, let me know by giving this video a big thumbs up. It really helps my channel. It helps me feel like I'm not just shouting into the void. <laughs> so let me describe to you my tiers. I did make this tier thing myself. For some reason, it wouldn't let me include the Bratz movie, which might be like trying to send a signal that <laughs> it shouldn't be talked about. First up, we have God tier. If you've been here before, if you've watched my ranking videos, you know there's always a God tier. It's untouchable, burning brighter than the sun. Nothing can beat that. This is a place for legends, okay? Next up, we have What Dreams Are Made Of. Pretty self-explanatory. You're at the Coliseum with your doppelganger. Uh, uh, uh. It's just legendary. Next, our middle tier is Moderately Fetch. What is Fetch? Oh, it's like slang from England. Anything Fetch is still pretty iconic and I am gonna let Fetch happen. It's just not quite up the ranks, you know? Then we have Straight to DVD. This is not at all to say that I wouldn't watch the movie because your girl loves a good Straight to DVD movie. That's just the caliber of the film. Finally, our last tier is like waiting for rain in this drought because it is useless and disappointing. And on that note, let's get into it. We are starting with A Cinderella Story. Laugh out loud. I have so much to say about this film. By the way, I would love to hear in the comments, were you a Hillary or a Lindsay? You'll probably figure out throughout this video who I was, if you can't already tell, but like which side of the feud were you on? Let me know. Let's just first of all talk about the fact that she was somehow like a loser and like uncool. Why? <laughs> She's conventionally beautiful, this like gorgeous blonde skinny white girl, like the formula for the popular girl in any movie. I guess like she was the only girl at school with a fringe. Maybe that was it. I just don't buy the whole thing that it was like, oh, you work for your dad's business. Like, so did Austin Ames. Like, he worked for his dad's car wash. What? What? <laughs> so never let the fear of striking out keep you from playing the game. I literally thought that was made up by her dad and not Babe Ruth. So sorry, Babe. Jennifer Coolidge literally deserved an Oscar for this role. You're not very pretty and you're not very bright. Droughts are for poor people. Mmm, so moist. Also, the fact that Austin Ames' dad was literally Peyton Sawyer's dad. Someone your dream. It's no dad. Someone win yours. Austin Ames' dad walked so that Coach Bolton could run. Also, speaking of Austin Ames, he was like kind of cheating on his girlfriend this whole movie. I think we're just like not meant to care or realize. Maybe that was where <laughs> Chad Michael Murray got the inspiration to cheat on Sophia Bush. He was like, well, no one will care about it. <laughs> um... Now, there was a rumor about this film that Rupert Grint was supposed to play Austin. He was like their first pick and they couldn't get him, so they got Chad Michael Murray. Listen, I love Rupert, like with all my heart, but this movie was filmed between the second and third Harry Potter films, so Rupert would have been 13. I just don't see it. I'm sorry, I'm not saying that redheads can't be the hot jock or experience the highs and lows of high school football. Chad was fully 22, by the way, and I think Hillary was like 15. There's gonna be a big pattern of that throughout these films. Other side note, I definitely want a full movie just about the like school announcer girl. She was by far the most interesting character in this movie. Also, I love the gazebo scene. I feel like Twilight definitely took inspiration from that. I guess Sound of Music kind of did it first, but historically, I think a Cinderella story is more widely known and beloved than the Sound of Music. Sound of Music was like a little indie in comparison to this film. On that note, a Cinderella story is going straight to God tier. 
where she belongs. Okay, and now we have what I guess is the sequel, another Cinderella story. Sometimes it feels like everybody wants something from me. They don't understand. I can only be one person that's Joey. No, I don't think you understand. I'm obsessed. Again, we have a very questionable age gap in this film. Selena was 15 and Drew was 26. How did anyone think that was okay? Right to jail, right away. When I was 15, I thought boys that were 16 were too old. And now that I'm in my 20s, I could not even like look at a teenager. How, ooh, that's weird, that's weird. I did really like this movie as a kid. It has Eunice from She's the Man in it. Joey Parker. Your prayers have been answered. Is that actress like the Judy Greer of the teen movies? So I'm gonna put it in straight to DVD, only because I think we have worse things on this list and it doesn't really belong there. The songs are fun. Hey, young, taking on the world from the driver's seat. The third Cinderella story, I don't even know what that is called. Once Upon a Song? Absolutely not. <laughs> I'm sorry, useless and disappointing. Okay, next up we have Confessions of a Teenage Drama Queen, which I believe to be one of the most underrated films of all time. The greatest poet since Shakespeare. I think Stuolf is the greatest poet since Shakespeare. Because I consider him to be the greatest Greatest poet since Shakespeare. I think it's some of Megan Fox's best work. Also, I wouldn't hang out with Ella Never Had a Fella, but I'm gonna stop myself before I get nasty. I would love to know if we had Brianna Wallace from Holiday in the Sun and Carla Santini and maybe even Jennifer Check, for those of you that have seen Jennifer's Body, one of the best films of all time. Imagine the three of those interacting. Who would win in a fight? I'm also now just realizing that Megan Fox and Hilary Duff never did a movie together, which is very interesting. Maybe that would have been too powerful and the world couldn't have handled that, but it also might have set us on like a much better trajectory. The wardrobe in this is phenomenal. I love that she really sort of normalized or celebrated being unique and standing out. Sam, the boy in this, wow. This is one of the movies that I do quote all the time with my friends. Like I want onion rings, a classic. I don't stay in chat, but I don't want to stay in chat. Oh my God, the song, that girl, and like the music video for it. One of the best things I've ever seen. I think that's one of the greatest songs of our time. I just think that the way she sings that song, it just takes me to another place. And the whole music video. The fact that Carla Santini gets her own song when she walks around, very Regina George of her. I think this movie is what dreams are made of. I think the music video and the song for That Girl is God tier, but the movie itself gets what dreams are made of. Next is What A Girl Wants. Your snotty little miss cranky pants and I go with the flow. This movie is such a comfort to me. It is just so good. Can we discuss why there was just this theme in every movie of like a missing parent, usually a dead parent. If I look at this list, Cinderella story, dead parent, well, two dead parents, drama queen, fake dead parent, what a girl wants, absent parent, freaky Friday, dead parent, Liz McGuire movie, she has both. She's the man, divorced parents. There is a lot of that going on here. Man, what a girl wants, this movie is just like England porn for like the rest of the world to watch. It is just so cool. If I have any subscribers in England that would like to give me that experience, just let me know. Oliver James is so cute, that scene out on the lake. Why are you trying so hard to fit in? Born to stand out. In this movie, we actually have two pretty good parents. Her mom did kind of make some questionable decisions, but I ride for Libby Reynolds, that woman. Oh. I can't believe Kelly Preston is dead. That is genuinely so sad. And I think watching this movie now, it hits harder knowing that. I'm so sorry to jump from that to what I'm about to say, but Henry in the leather pants, he's a dilf. <laughs> I really like Amanda's character in this. I think in the 2000s, she played a lot of kind of over the top, quirky, not like other girls, girls, which we'll get to. But in this one, she felt a little bit more grounded. So Daphne was like, great. My favorite quote from this movie is, she can dump tea in my harbor anytime. As a kid, that <laughs> went right over my head, thank God. And this movie has arguably one of the best dress makeovers when someone purposely gives you an ugly outfit and they're like, no, I'm gonna make it cute. And then we have this great reveal. A lot of movies tried to replicate it. I'm sure this wasn't the first to do it, but I love that scene. This movie literally is what a girl wants. And so for that, I have to give it God tier. A classic. Classic. Not debatable. Not up for debate. Okay, next we have Freaky Friday. Oh, I'm like the Crypt Keeper! Okay, that's
that's enough. Chad Michael Murray was one of my first ever celebrity crushes and I feel the need to retract that and also apologize to Sophia Bush. I will never forgive him and neither should you. Team Nathan, obviously. I do need to say, however, his chemistry with Jamie Lee Curtis in this movie is palpable. They are so good together. It's genuinely amazing watching them interact in scenes. Sparks fly. Wow, Jamie Lee Curtis, Chad Michael Murray. Bring back the three name celebrity. It was so classy. Yeah, love that this character is just full crushing on an older woman. Don't love that Tess, the mother who's presumably like 50, kisses him in her daughter's body, but it's fine. It's fine. You know, we weren't seeing a lot of representation in movies at this time. You can probably see from how white this list looks. It was nice seeing a redhead lead for once. I feel like that was kind of rare. And great diversity in her best friends too. We had one was Puerto Rican and one was a goth. <laughs> also, the fact that Jamie Lee Curtis actually learned that guitar solo for like the Wango Tango audition scene, that alone makes this movie god tier. Also, we have to shout out Stacy. I think her name is, the blonde baddie that played the mean girl in both this and the Cinderella story. I would love to have seen more from her. Lindsay Lohan is just very good at being in fantastic remakes, like The Parent Trap and Freaky Friday. Both of those are remakes and they're so much better than the originals. <laughs> Freaky Friday gets God tier. I've just realized I should have also put Herbie Fully Loaded on this list. I think I would put it in Moderately Fetch. It was pretty good. As far as car movies, it's definitely the best. Like, I don't know why they keep making the Fast and the Furious franchise when Herbie exists, but it's not like my favorite Lindsay movie. So it would be in Fetch. Next up, we have Raise Your Voice. I just have one thing to say, the classroom scene. <laughs> Oliver James's character in this is also like nowhere near as good as his character in What A Girl Wants. He's like a bit of a dick. Don't love him. Don't love the frosted tips. Do love that song when they're out in the courtyard. I'm deeply in love with Paul, the brother in this movie. I wish we got to see more Paul. Obviously we don't, that's kind of the whole point. <laughs> but I would have loved to have seen it. But yeah, only rewatching this as an adult did I realize that it's kind of like a Christian propaganda. That totally went over my head as a kid. So I'm gonna put it in moderately fetch. Hillary did some good acting. I just wish all of the singing had been hers. <laughs> now I need to talk about my girl, Miss Lizzie McGuire. Dreams. We're going to the land where they invented spaghetti. Piece of that, piece of the younger Meyer. Ooh, Sammy's. Hilary Duff just has so many iconic movies on this list. I would love to read like a miles to go, yes, I'm looking at my copy, kind of autobiography from her because just imagine the stories that she would have to tell from those early Disney days and like going to parties and the whole Aaron Carter, Lindsay thing. I need to know, did you and Adam Lambert ever hook up? Is that his name? I think that's right. Speaking of which, Adam Lambert absolutely walked so that Timothy Chalamet could run. I just, I think that is fact. I always used to wonder like, oh my God, why was La Lane? not in this movie. I thought maybe that something had happened to the actress, like she was in rehab or like something went wrong. But now I'm kind of realizing the movie just wouldn't have really worked with Miranda in it. She kind of would have been in the way. <laughs> when the Sex and the City reboot came out recently and they were like, yeah, Samantha's not in it. I was like, okay, is she also in Mexico City with her parents? Gordo is just so beautiful and so perfect because he at no point becomes like an incel jealous guy. He's just like, okay, you wanted to have adventure. I know we said we would do it together, but right now you have this great opportunity. You should go. I'm happy for you and just like pushes her to have this amazing time. I love him so much and I am devastated and also furious that we didn't get the reboot. That was the highlight of my life, that coming back and I don't know what to do now. If I were Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos and I had all that money, I would not be wasting it on space travel. I would be putting it into the Lizzie McGuire reboot and giving the people what they want. I have the mind of a mastermind. What's that? I don't know but it's kind of interesting that like everyone that was in this movie has not acted ever since. I think everyone realized that this was the peak of cinema and it's all downhill from there and nothing could ever touch it. So they immediately quit acting afterwards. The pop mix version of Volare in this movie is the only version I acknowledge. It is so iconic. <laughs> Oh, 
That was so powerful. The fact that this movie gives us a scene where she's getting a clothing makeover whilst RuPaul's song plays. You can't watch that and tell me this is not God tier. This is absolutely God tier. Lizzie is going straight up the top where she belongs. Next we have Sleepover. This was one of my other favorites as a kid. Like it was very quotable to me. Cha ching iPhone bras. Also as a kid, I didn't realize the age difference between Julie, Julie Corky, and Steve, is that his name? This TikTok video says it much better than I could. Julie Corky? Wait, what? Think about that playing out in real life. Like this is a high school homecoming. He's homecoming king, so he's probably like 17 or 18 and she's a middle school girl. Like, what would you do if you're at your actual high school? There's like an 18 year old guy about to go up to college. Julie? Julie Corky? Oh, who is Julie Corky? Oh, she doesn't go here. She's in middle school. She's only 14, I think. Julie, are you? Bro, why would she be here? She doesn't go. I know that. She's in middle school, but I saw her earlier on a skateboard. Julie, where is my 14 year old dream girl? And we've got Evan Peters. We've got Brie Larson, Sarah Paxton, little indie actor known as Steve Carell. Hi, mom. Jane Lynch, you know, some pretty key players there. I honestly want to put it in God tier, but just the fact that they named someone Yancey and then made her entire identity just the fact that she was fat. Hey Yancey, my father's a lawyer. Oh, he can help you sue the diet pill company for non-performance. <laughs> I feel like I can't quite award it the top spot, but I'm gonna put it in what dreams are made of. Next we have She's the Man, another Shakespearean classic, one of the most quotable movies of all time. End of discussion. Fine. End of relationship. Oh. One plot hole that I don't quite understand is that Olivia fell in love with Sebastian for his personality, right? Like she was like, oh my God, you're so different to all the other guys. All the other guys here are like into toxic masculinity and you're so different and compliment my shoes. I think Olivia and Viola should have ended up together, right? Isn't he cute? Duke? Yeah. No, Sebastian, he's so cool. I have this huge thing for his roommate, Sebastian. You're bye. Just personally, I think she would have been dissatisfied with the actual version of Sebastian that probably is like every other man and would treat her the same way. So also if this movie didn't make you want a flip phone, I don't know what to tell you, you didn't watch it. So She's the Man is obviously God tier. Look at that, Amanda, Lindsay and Hillary up there where they belong. The queens of the 2000s. Alexa Vega is really trying her hardest to get up there but I don't think she's gonna make it. Next up we have Aquamarine. I could literally cry thinking about how much I love this movie and just how heartwarming it is. It is truly a film about like the power of female friendship and platonic love, which is so underrated and underrepresented in films today, I think. Why would you do that for me? Because we love you, Aqua. I didn't know you leak when you're happy too. Did we all collectively take a long sleeve shirt and try and tie it into a fashionable dress like Aqua did? Because it just scientifically does not work. To this day, I don't know how she did it. I feel like Mythbusters should do an episode on that. The scene when they come back and Aqua's in the bath and it's Jojo's legs hanging over the tub, that is like still one of the best cinematic moments to me of all time. It was a cultural reset. And speaking of Jojo, firstly, I love her acting career so much. Like her in this and RV, she's phenomenal. She's like one of the best comedic actresses. She had like the Amanda Bynes energy going on for her. Secondly, for anyone that doesn't know, she went through the whole thing with her record label, like what Taylor has gone through, where she just like didn't have the rights to her music, wasn't allowed to put anything out. So after this, go and listen to some of Jojo's new music or re-recordings and give her some support. Emma Roberts is one of my favorite early 2000s nepotism babies and she's quite good in this. He came out of hiding. Can you make boobs come out of hiding? As far as movie men go, like the love interest, the boys, Raymond is kind of up there. Like he's very respectful. The fact that Aqua is like, well, do you love me? And he's like, no, it's been a day. It's been like one date, but you know, you're great. And like, I want to get to know you more. Any other guy and also any other girl and like myself included would have been like, red flag, you're kind of crazy. But he's just like, no, I'm not in love with you yet. But like, let's, you know, see where this goes. Um, is that good? Yes, it's very calming. Okay, I'll try some. Well, she tried, at least 
you know. It's just an acquired taste, huh? To this day, I still want mood nail polish and earrings that compliment me. I just think earrings that gave me compliments would solve all of my self-esteem issues. Again, I have to wonder, Raymond is doing all these summer jobs to save for college where he's about to go to. And these girls are going into eighth grade. Americans, please tell me what that age is. Is that like 14? What is with these movies and inappropriate age gaps? My all time favorite, hands down quote from this movie is when Jojo says, love is the closest thing we have to magic like that this movie had no right to be so profound also one of the things that 2000s movies did spectacularly well was having a song by one of the lead performers in the credits so for example in this movie we got emma roberts rendition of island in the sun or as i like to call it hip hip when I think about the girls jumping into the like stormy ocean to save Aquamarine, even though Claire's parents died at sea and she's terrified of the water, but they're like, no, we can do this together. The power of female friendship. It's a cheesy kids movie, but they get it. Look, I don't know if it's God tier, but I think Aquamarine is what dreams are made of. Next we have The Princess Diaries. Prove me to know that royalty would see one day this movie really does it for me. It has a fantastic soundtrack. We have Anne Hathaway in her cinematic debut, Mandy Moore, Julie Andrews. This is a standout cast. I feel like it's very rare that movies leave bloopers in. So the fact that they left in the scene where like Mia falls because Anne just fell on the chair and like kept rolling, fantastic. Always fun to watch. I think maturing is realizing that Jeremiah is actually cuter than Michael. This movie absolutely convinced me that Genovia was a real place. I'm still not 100% convinced that it's not. I'd very much like to visit. I like peaches. When I think about the second movie and the parade as breakaway plays, oh, I didn't include that in this list because I think in the second one, she's definitely not a teenager. Like she's getting married and all of that jazz, but the second one is so good. I love Chris Pine. Chris Pine is the second most superior Chris. What about the title husband? Yeah, he's cute. Mm, his boyfriend thinks he's handsome also. Right on. I think The Princess Diaries is God tier. Yeah, it is. It is. Next up, we have Save the Last Dance. Now, this movie is okay. I just want to ask, are we sure this dance got her into Juilliard? I am a victim of a hate crime. That's not what a hate crime is. Well, I hated it. I think because I didn't watch it as a kid and it's a little bit sad for me to watch now, I'm gonna put it in moderately fetch. All right, next up we have Mean Girls. See, this is the color I want. Arguably the most iconic teen girl film of all time. Definitely the most quotable. And none for Gretchen Wieners, bye. The fact that Rachel McAdams did this and The Notebook in the same year, her range. Also fun fact, Rachel McAdams and Lindsay Lohan auditioned for each other's roles. I just love when you hear stories like that. And you're like, how could you ever thought that? When you're so perfect for this character. I feel like there's not much I can say about Mean Girls that hasn't already been said because we all know how iconic it is and it's obviously going up into God tier. So you can go shave your back now. So far in God tier we have two Lindsay, two Hillary, two Amanda. Love that. And one for the actress that was at the party and asked Taylor Swift what happened. Next we have Mean Girls 2. I'm happy to say that that movie is useless and disappointing. I've completely blocked that movie out of my memory because I know it was just evil. Like who greenlit that? Who decided to smear and ruin such a flawless film? Yuck, 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 yuck. Just, oh, I really dislike sequels that you know did not need to be made. There's no story there. It, no. I do love Legally Blonde too, so don't come for me for that one. But this was just an unnecessary money grabbing sequel and it's down the bottom where it belongs. I'm actually gonna say what everyone else is thinking because it's the truth. Now we have Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants. Honestly, again, like I said earlier, I love a movie about female friendship and the power of platonic soulmates, which is exactly what this movie is. Maybe the truth is there's a little bit of loser in all of us, you know? Fun fact, that is Blake Lively's real dad playing her dad and also her real nose playing her real nose. I love movies like this where it's like everyone can see themselves in at least one of the characters. I think I would maybe be a Lena son with a Bridget rising. <laughs> I honestly think I relate a lot to Tibby, at least the past sort of year or so where everyone else is kind of like out traveling the world, having an amazing summer and thriving. And she's just like stuck at home and people she loves are dying. <laughs> is that too grim to say in this video? I'm sorry. The pandemic's been weird. <laughs> anyway, let me know which girl you are in the comments. I'm going to put Sisterhood of the Travel 
shoving pants in What Dreams Are Made Of. I don't think it's quite god tier because that's just like another level, you know? But it is amazing. Now we have Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants 2. I have to be honest, I don't remember this. I know I've seen it because Jesse Williams is in it, so great casting job. If you ever needed someone to like help you get over Costas, it would be him. Look, you know what? I'm going to put it in moderately fetch. I'm sure these girls gave something good in that movie. I just can't remember it, but I will get back to you and let me know what you thought of it. So it says 13 going on 30. In my country, this movie is called Suddenly 30. So I will be referring to it as that. And I'm counting this movie because technically she is literally a teenager the whole time. She's just in an older body. So this film gave us Ashley Benson and Brie Larson cameos, which is great. And and also one of the best soundtracks of all time. I could just cry. This movie quite obviously belongs in God tier. I think that is just indisputable. Jennifer Garner is a treasure. Next up we have John Tucker Must Die. This guy is cheating on all of you and instead of taking it out on him, you're beating the shit out of each other? Holy jamalama. Careful, you're hot. I mean, they're hot. I really miss in the 2000s when movies would be named super creative things like that. Like at no point in the movie do they say the words John Tucker must die. And it just gives this like very dramatic feel, which I love. I feel like if it came out now, it would be called like dating revenge story or like girl and boy. Sophia Bush is in this, which is, I mean, it's Sophia Bush as like a vegan and like a slutty vegan. The representation we've all been needing. Thank you so much, Queen. For you, I don't have to give up on me. Actually, all of the girls in this kill it, and so does Jesse Metcalf. It is a little bit disturbing for me to see Lonely Boy's origin story, bit of Joe Goldberg coming up there. That's a bit scary. Again, arguably one of, if not the best movie soundtrack from this whole era. Fantastic. I honestly think for the soundtrack alone, I want to put this in God tier. Yep. Next up we have The Perfect Man, which I'm gonna be honest, I don't really remember a lot about. I know that Big from Sex and the City was in it, which is funny because Aiden is in Raise Your Voice. Yeah, it's quite forgettable to me, which is why it's just gonna go straight to DVD because I think this is Hilary Duff's weakest moment if we don't include Material Girls, which I've forgotten to put on this list because it's also so forgettable. I'm so sorry. Next up we have Sydney White. Now, remember what I said earlier about Amanda getting very like quirky, not like other girl roles. And as an Aquarius, sure, I love those as a kid, but now it's like very painful to watch. The 2000s just like love to promote eating disorders in girls. It was really weird. But this movie also opens with like the tradies teaching her how to cat call and just, she's not like other girls. She's a tomboy. She eats real food. I get it. I get it. I get it. Like. I respect it. It's all right, you know, it's okay. I'm gonna put it in straight to DVD. It's not one that I really need to watch over and over again. Like I said earlier, the Bratz movie just would not let me include it on this list. I think I would put it in straight to DVD also. It's not great. <laughs> I do love the early 2000s for their like stereotypical categorization of high school students being like, you're the sporty one, you're the fashion one, you're Chet Hanks. <laughs> I saw Dear Evan Hansen finally two nights ago and I realized who he reminded me of. It was this guy. Anyway, Bratz would be in straight to DVD. Now we have the Bring It On, I want to say trilogy, but what's the word for five? Philogy. Bring it. The original Bring It On, I think genuinely like changed the game in cinema for real. Like I think it kind of had the same effect that Glee did in the TV show world because before Bring It On, cheerleading wasn't really that big of a thing. And since that, I mean, it's spawned four sequels plus a musical plus the show Cheer. Like I think it just put cheerleading on the map. By the way, Nice spear fingers. Yeah. Well, here's another. It's definitely the first time I, as a kid, ever heard about cultural appropriation, which is awesome for such a mainstream film. You've been touched by an angel, girl. Also, the casting in this is incredible. Like, Aaron has big Warner Huntington III energy, and Cliff, my boy Cliff, pant one, probably also one of the dreamiest and best boys on this whole list. He has big Seth Cohen, like, sarcastic energy. That teeth brushing scene, not a single word is uttered, but the sexual tension, amazing. Better than a lot of the movies on this list, just that scene there alone. Why was that so hot? Victoria Justice's Grammy award-winning song, Best Friend's Brother, was inspired by that scene. Bring It On absolutely has to be God tier. The second Bring It On, I literally do not remember anything about, except I think Haley from One Tree Hill is in it. Sorry. Now, Bring It On 3, All or Nothing, Solange Knowles and Hayden Panettiere in this movie. 
fantastic. But homecoming, it's on. Oh, it is so on. The scene when Hayden Panettiere like crumps on that guy. Is that even legal? I also think this was the film that inspired the Broadway musical of Bring It On, which if you guys didn't know is one of my favorite musicals of all time. If you like Hamilton or Legally Blonde, definitely check it out. And so I have to give this movie props for that. It is what dreams are made of. But you don't make the rules. I do. The fourth one, which is Bring It On, In It To Win It, was another one that I had a weird hyper fixation on. That's the one with the sharks and the jets. So I'm telling my kids that that is West Side Story. Dance, dance. I did love the Ashley Tisdale he said she said feature. I'm gonna put it in moderately fetch. Bring it on, fight to the finish. Again, I do not remember it. I'm so sorry. I'm putting that in straight to DVD. Okay, this lighting is really annoying me. Let's fix it. So next we have Blue Crush. Now this movie I think inspired everyone to be a surfer girl. <laughs> I think more than anything I like their clothes and I wanted to like have the cool Roxy outfits and like work at a hotel with my friends. It just seemed really fun. So I'm gonna put this in moderately fetch. Next we have Angus Thongs and Perfect Snogging. Now, like a lot of the films on this list, this was a book adaptation. So I would like to know if any of you guys like read the books and then saw the movie, if it was faithful or if it was good, if you liked it. I think it's one of the few British movies on this list. It's one of the few British movies to make it big. We had Mr. Marvel himself, Aaron Taylor Johnson. Wow, so many Marvel people on this list actually. I feel like the lingo in this is really fun because it is British, it's just a little bit different different to everything else. I figured out what I've got that Slaggy Lindsay doesn't. Hair on the back of your legs? No ma'am. No ma'am. I think we should bring that term back. I think slaggy is a very fun word. Also fugly. I love that word. I'm gonna put this movie in what dreams are made of. Next we have Fired Up. Sure, I'll teach you how to do the Fountain of Troy. <laughs> then I'm gonna teach you how to put makeup on a bear. <laughs> like I said earlier, Bring It On really started like a whole waterfall cascade effect of cheerleading content. And this is a perfect example of that. I honestly loved this movie when it came out. It's very different to the rest of this list because I think the rest of this list is very female centric, whereas this has two men kind of at the helm. That move is prohibidado. Prohibidado. I think I mostly included it because I have a big fat crush on the brunette one. What else is he in? He's in the same era of like Nicholas Braun, who is another man that just belongs in my heart forever. If you get it, you get it. If you don't, you don't. If you know, you know. I feel like some of the jokes in this movie are probably a little bit outdated now, but I do just love when her like dickhole boyfriend comes and calls her different variations of Carly. Carly Horace. Carly's junior, baby. Carly and the chocolate factor, sugar. Carlsbad, California. Never gets old. I'm gonna put Fired Up in Moderately Fetch. Next up we have 13 and it is very different to the rest of the films on this list. I just mostly wanted to include it to encourage you guys to see it if you haven't. I feel like if you have seen this movie, you're either very edgy now or bisexual. <laughs> Tag yourself below. This was a semi-autobiographical movie by Nikki Reed, aka this queen right here. And it's definitely a lot more serious than the films on this list. I probably shouldn't have watched it as young as I did, but it's really good. We also have Vanessa Ann Hudgens making a little cameo in this movie. I'm gonna put it in moderately fetch. And finally, the last movie on our list is Wild Child. Who are we? I understand you're uh, just- To me, negotiation is like a nightclub not something I tend to enter into. Can I help you? I mean, one word, Freddie Kingsley. Better an empty house than an angry tenant, right? If you didn't go through an Alex Pettifer stage, I don't know what to tell you. That man was just beautiful. Do you want to kiss Fredster on the lips? Don't be so immature. Don't try and hide it, honey. We've got ourselves a Sula. Sweaty upper lip alert. So I wanted to see her, um, her anger level. I love that this movie had a scene where they go thrifting and like op shopping because obviously it's very trendy to do that now, but back when I was doing that out of necessity in school, that was never seen as cool. And so I love that they have that scene in this movie. Can we bring yesterday back we got Emma Roberts doing this. And again, it's a movie about the power of friendship because she goes into the burning building literally to save her friend. Sure, there's romance in this movie, but I think overall it's about learning to be the better version of yourself and finding besties for life. So I'm gonna put Wild Child in What Dreams Are Made Of. And 
There we have it guys, this is my list. Let me know down below if I missed any movies that I should have included and I will like give them a ranking and explain why in the comments. But I'd also just love to hear where you would place these movies, what your thoughts are, if you strongly disagree with any of my choices, I would love to argue about it down below. Or if you have any ideas on what you would like to see me rank in the future, comment that down below as well. Make sure you give this video a big thumbs up. It lets me know that you like seeing pop culture stuff from me. Make sure to subscribe down below and hit the bell so you don't miss an upload and I'll see you guys next time. Can Bye!